Well, it's mailbag time. I've got loads of packages here. I've got probably enough to do three or four mailbags in one go. It's ridiculous. Anyway, big box. We'll get to that last and we'll go through these other things to find out what I'll purchase this time. Yeah, but links for these things down below as always. If you're interested in anything, and I can stick a link down there, I will. 7 amp fuses and 4 amp and 5 amp. Is it 3 amp? Yeah, okay, so a whole bunch of inline fuses. There was something I actually wanted to work on not too long ago and I needed to put some inline fuses in. I had to mess around with it a little bit to make it work. And I realised I didn't actually have any of this style of fuse of this value. I do have this style but in other values. I didn't have these particular values. So yeah, I'll chuck links down below for these. Little inline fuses. Handy things to have. And are quite commonly used. Cheap. Subscribe. Okay, now I was doing a rebuild of my project, so I had to build some more units, which is a thing we use for events, and it uses the sharp memory displays, which I picked up off a guy on Twitter, actually, interestingly, and he actually had like a surplus of them, I managed to get them for a decent price, a couple of times, I've put down a couple of orders for them. Yeah, it uses these kinds of modules. It uses sharp memory displays, and I'll have to use a little plug adapter thing to connect them up, like a little... What's one of these little connectors actually, which has got one of these connectors on it with uh, holes in it for wiring up, manual wiring up to the controller. Right, so I use a sharp memory display. And part of the problem is I would like to do it a different way. I would actually like to do a hard ribbon cable because right now I'm manually wiring from that adapter onto the microcontroller board to make the connections up. I don't actually like that method. I mean, it's very manual, but it's, it's only a very niche product. It's only a very limited number of them, you know, half a dozen. <laughs> Not many of them, so it's not something that's worth redeveloping. I was actually thinking about maybe getting some of these little extender boards because then you can plug the ribbon cable in from the actual memory display on straight into one of these. Then I've got these little extension ribbons which I can then plug into that board and then potentially run over to the main board. So if I were to redesign them, I could use these little extensions to get them further on because there is actually a gap between the display and the main module. So Trying to get the original flex from the display to reach would be tricky. It might do it. I don't think it would. So that's why I've got these, thinking I can just have these as an extension. And if I ever do revisit it, but at least now I've got the bits to do it. Now these are 10 pin flexes and stuff, so they weren't expensive. Wow. Okay. One gigabyte SD cards, or micro SD cards. Five of those. And you think one gigabyte, we can use that for. Well, if you've got things like an ESP32 or some kind of IoT device and you've got a micro SD card reader on that, you don't actually usually, or usually you don't need, much space, right? So one gigabyte is plenty and these things are cheap. So why not get them? I mean, in my case, I'm using these to record text files it's like a logging system. So each time it records a result at the event, it also dumps it on the SD card. And these files are small, you know, you're talking kilobytes. I mean, after using that system for a couple of years, I think it's only used something like 300k or something like that on an actual memory card. So, don't need much space. Gigabyte is plenty, and, you know, why spend money on massive cards? You don't need to. And also, got these micro SD card adapters. I've got purple ones, because my wife could probably use one of these, or two of these, scattered around. She loses the things, too. And being this colour means it's likely to stand out inside a bag or something like that. You know, they always disappear. Black ones always go missing. Always have trouble finding the things. So at least this colour stands out a little bit. It's a bit more unusual. And so it grabs your eye if you're trying to find the things. So. Ooh, one's broken. Look at this. That one there's broken. That's a shame. They're cheap anyway. Don't worry about it. So, these are little power supplies. What were these things for? So I've got 20 of them. I believe these are lithium charge controllers. 5 to 15 volts at one end. And I'm guessing that's battery positive and negative that end. And it was selectable. And here it is settable. There was a resistor set up on it or something. I don't know how it was, I'm going to go and look it up. There was a way of actually setting the voltages on them. It's got a set thing here. I don't know, I have to look it up, but I'm pretty sure that's what they were, was lithium charge controllers. So you can just use these to charge your lithium cells up. 
you can figure it for however many cells it's going to be. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I bought a few different ones recently. Screws. Or bolts, I suppose, it's probably more accurate. Metric, 3mm by 8mm long, 3 by 10, uh, 2.5 by 10, and 2.5 by 8. So I've actually got some little screw assortments which I use. I've been getting a bit low because so these are the sort of sizes I tend to use quite a bit in my projects, these kinds of sizes. These ones actually fit beautifully on some of my project cases where I'm screwing circuit boards in. 2.5mm threaded screws in beautifully and 3 mils are the size I use quite often for bolting things together and these have got quite wide heads on them it's got quite a large, well large-ish flat head on there, I don't get on even in shot, I don't know can you kind of see it that one there, maybe? it's got this large flat head for that size screw instead of being smaller so it spreads the loading across the PCB and stuff like that I'm not sure what this thing is I think it was local which surprises me Ah, no. This is a review item. It must have been repacked locally. Kybit screwdriver set. Electric screwdriver handle. Magnetic design. 360D light. Precision bits. ES20. So Kybit's got me and asked if I was wanting to look at this thing. I will be doing a proper review on this. Give it a test out and that sort of stuff. Let's have a quick look at it. Nice carry pouch thing. Well, okay. So we've got some bits there. More bits there, some tools and stuff here, disassembly tools, oh, it's falling out from somewhere, I'll just shove it back in there for now, here's the screwdriver, there's the torch on the end, so you can see a bit better, okay, so the actual end bit is recessed in, so if I hold that, it's actually not spinning, but the inside bit is spinning. USB-C charging. I'll check that out later on. Which we'll after that review. Now we've got a big box coming up yet. It's actually quite funny having that Kiwi's thing to turn up. I happen to be wearing a Kiwi's shirt. I know what's in this box. I've got a few things to do before I can actually get to use it, but uh, I'll have a bit of a play around with it. Maybe not now in the mailbag. But I think you'd be interested in watching me play around with it anyway. The things in this box I'm talking about. <laughs> they included a Frito, that was nice of them. This is a locally purchased thing. Double boxed and bubble wrapped. That is definitely death on proof. Next layer. Power cord. Four bubble wrap. Lots of bubble wrap, really well packaged, I'm liking that. Got small boxes for the box pile, the wife won't like that. This is an Apple Mac Pro late 2013 version. I don't actually know what year this was actually produced, this particular model. They ran from like 2013, 2019 is when they got discontinued. So this yes, is a fairly old computer, but it's still newer than what I'm using. So I purchased this locally on like a auction site, and it wasn't cheap. Turned out to not have the right CPU in it, as <laughs> this did. The guy obviously read just rechecking and stuff like that before he sent it. You know, due diligence that sort of stuff, which is good on them. From this company over here, it's called Cortec. This is a New Zealand company, and they were good to deal with, I think. I mean, obviously I haven't powered this up yet, who knows what it's going to be like, but so far, it's been a good experience. Now, this was a couple of grand, this thing. I'm currently using a 2010 Mac Pro, which is quite a beast in itself. I've already upgraded that, I did like a video upgrading the processor to a 3.46 gigahertz, stuff like that, to the, to the highest processor it could have, and that kind of stuff. And I'm running four drives in it, and all sorts of things like that, SSDs, and two terabyte SSD, and things like that in it. That's because it's my main machine, it's my editing machine. I did my work on that. It's getting a bit old though, it's getting left behind too much now. So, I mean, the machine itself works fine. I'm not worried about the speed really as such, but it's getting left behind with software. You know, I mean, Apple's suddenly 
in the past five years taken off and done his updates stuff like that and things is getting left behind him and the computer can do some more modern stuff I'm getting left behind with it so I wanted to get a new computer and try and keep up a bit more and get a bit more modern and uh, not be left so far behind so that's why I got this now when I got this thing it was supposed to have a 2.7 gigahertz 12 core processor on it and it turned out that's not what it had gonna hopefully have this as my main machine in future I've got to do a lot of work to transfer everything over to it I mean, the actual importing process of going from one system to another is actually fairly painless on Apple. But there's a few little tweaks stuff I've got in the background which I need to do. And uh, the SSD, and this is a one terabyte drive, I will need to look at changing that because I need a two terabyte drive. I've already purchased one, it's on its way, hopefully. I haven't heard anything about shipping it though, but I've purchased one. So I will be changing this to a two terabyte. But in the meantime, before I do any changes to it, I'm going to test it in its current configuration as supplied and make sure it all works good. Um, and by the time you see this video, I would have been using this for a little while, I expect, because this won't be out for a while. So it's got six Thunderbolt ports. I need to try and find like Thunderbolt drive adapters and stuff like that. I think I need something like that. Um, it's only got four USBs. I wish these things had more USBs on them. How many things use USB? I've got four USB webcams for when I'm doing live streaming. That's four ports gone straight away. I've only got a keyboard mouse, because I've used a wired keyboard and use a wired mouse. We've got, oh, that's so 90s. Well. I don't have to keep charging them up or replacing them. They're always ready to go. I'll just pick it up and use it and it, you know, it's there. I don't need to walk around the room with them. They're on my desk. They don't need to be wireless. Anyway. <laughs> so I've got those and I've got test gear which is plugged in as well through USB for my computer to link into that. I've got a USB extension card. I've got a USB 3 card in the back which is full of ports that's full. I think I've got something like 15 devices plugged into my computer, something like that. I'm going to need to use some hubs. So I'm actually thinking about Thunderbolt devices and what I can get for this. This is Thunderbolt 2. There's also Thunderbolt 3, 4 on the newer devices, but this is Thunderbolt 2. So I'd actually would like to get an external drive enclosure which uses Thunderbolt and that sort of stuff. I don't, I don't know what you can actually get. And this one's got an HDMI port here. And you can actually get into it by sliding it over and lifting it off. Here's the ramp. One terabyte memory stick. These are proprietary things, they're not standard. So there's two graphics cards. There's this graphics card here, and there's another one here. And only one of them's got the SSD mounted on it, obviously. And basically one is actually used for graphics, and one's used for processing power. And more RAM over there. So that's all looking good. Looks like it's been cleaned. When I purchased this, it turned out it didn't actually have the right processor on it. The guy obviously did his due diligence and testing and found out, oh, that's not got the right processor. He actually got the right processor in, and he installed it for me. I expect in the top of the range processor basically. E52697 V2 is what's in it. Yeah. That's a fun project for me to do this weekend. So I check out my other videos down below if you you know sick of you be tired going about Mac computers and subscribe here if you're not already subscribed and pay for supporting over there.